Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Let's Talk About God. Welcome, everybody. Thank you that you all guys spend, um, took time out to spend this time with us uh, in talking about the most important thing, which is our God, our Savior, and our loving Father. Um, um, the purpose of these talks is to share Bible verses that leads to an intelligent faith in Christ's life, his character, his mission to earth, and the death and resurrection, that we may know him and render an intelligent choice in which side we choose in the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Romans 14 verse 5 says, Something that one day is more important than others, than other, and others think that every day is the same. The issue is whether to observe the Jewish Sabbath, let, but let us all be sure and fully convinced in our own mind so that we are sure of what we are believing in our own mind. In these talks, we will be inviting our viewers to join us in an open forum where we will be discussing monthly topics broken down into weekly talks with Bible verses, which has question and answers. Each talk is about 60 minutes. Sometimes we, oh, most of the time we go over because we, 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 <laughs> we can't stop talking, right? Um, and we'll have between two or four questions. So we ask that you provide short answers if possible, ever supported by Bible verses in our experiences in life and, and what God has shown us in our life. Format for this talk is, um, um, like we said, a monthly, and then every week we, we, we have it broken down into small. So the topic for this month is God's promises. And our topic for this week, week one, is the promise of the seed. The promise of the seed. And for next week will be um, um, the promise to take away our rebellion, Ezekiel 11, verse 19 to 20. Lastly, this is a very open forum, and there may be different points of views from topic to topic or verse to verse. But we must all remember to respect each other's views, including the views of other denominations, and agree to disagree respectfully if necessary. And I would like us not to even mention other denominations because they aren't here to defend themselves. So let us stay, just focus on, let's talk about God. We will be sticking close to the topic for these talks, but there will be an opportunity for you to ask specific individual questions if you would like to. Um, the way you can, you can email us at letstalkaboutgod3 at gmail.com or on Facebook, Let's Talk About God. And we will try and reply. If you leave your questions there and have maybe some, a small piece in the beginning or the end of the program to answer your question. At this time, um, I'm going to ask Rod to, to open for us in prayer. Oh, before that, Rod, I just want to tell some of the people who's listening and would, who maybe would like to join us. We will be changing our recording times of these videos from Saturdays to Sunday evenings, just to give us more time. Um, oh, we can't give you a date yet. We still need to work that out. But for next, maybe in next month, in two weeks, three weeks, we'll give you the time when we, starting, when we will start to move it from the Saturday to the Sunday. We will let you know if you, before you join us with the recording. May God be with us. Thanks, Rod. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to participate in this meeting, and we invite you to be among us so we can understand more about you, your love, and your character. Uh, we can be in harmony with you and live a life that you can be proud of us. Help us understanding, understand your word and live by it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you both, uh, Hyper, for your introduction and for Rod for your prayer. And um, as, as Hyper said, our monthly topic uh, for this month is God's promises. And today's talk is titled The Promise of the Seed. Um, I think that one should get uh, pretty good uh, comments coming from you guys in relation to uh, the seed uh, or the promise seed, I should say. 
Um, look, I just want to kind of set the scene a little bit about um, our, our, our talk for today. So I'll just start off by saying that, I mean, God, God made several promises uh, to Abraham, okay? Uh, one of the promises was that he would have a son as an heir, and you can find that in Genesis 15, verse 4. Uh, another promise is the possession of the literal land of Canaan in Genesis 15 and 18. The, and also the promise of becoming a great nation in Genesis 12 and verse 2 and Genesis 15 verse uh, 5. Also, he was going to be the progenitor of the Messiah. And you get that in Galatians 3.16. And also, um, it was a promise of, being the, uh, of having the privilege of being God's chosen instrument to proclaim salvation uh, oh, to the okay. nations of the earth in Genesis 12, 3, Galatians 3, 8, and 14. And these, 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 uh, these promises are uh, scattered all throughout the Bible. Um, if you want to just uh, reference any of the uh, texts that I've just, or verses I've just shared with you, and uh, I'm sure you will find many more to support uh, that, um, that line of thinking. Um, then I want to say, um, but most of the, but the most important of, of all promises and which uh, was several times repeated was that of the blessings that would come through Christ. And I think we need to understand that. Um, he, it says, he that is, God saith, not and to seeds as of many, as if the promise were made to several kinds of seed, but as of one, that is one kind of seed, one posterity, one kind of sons. And all these, and to all these, the blessing belonged by promise, and, and that promise which is Christ. Um, uh, that includes all that believe in him as well. You can find that in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 18. So um, I'm going to go back a little bit uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the book of, uh, uh, of Galatians as well. Uh, in Galatians 4, 22 and 23, it says, Originally, the, the promise of the posterity pointed forward uh, to, in a literal sense, to Isaac. And we all understand that. He was a, a part of the, the promise in a literal sense. Um, but here, by inspiration, the, the apostle points to the figurative truth deeper than which the promise appeared on the surface to embrace. We can also read that in uh, Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15. The promise, first, the promise met its first and partial fulfillment in Isaac, but was to have a final and complete fulfillment in Christ. Um, as the Bible presents uh, like two laws, one changeless and eternal, the other provisional and temporary, so there are two covenants. The covenant of grace was first made with man in Eden when after the fall, there was given a divine promise that the seed of the woman should bruise the serpent's head. To all men, this covenant offered pardon and assisting grace of God for future obedience through faith in Christ. It also promised them eternal life on the conditions of the, um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to add this in there, the fidelity of the law for keeping the law. And uh, thus the prayer to receive the hope of salvation. Um, this same covenant re was renewed, though, to Abraham in the promise, in thy seed, shall all nations of the earth be blessed, as we read before Genesis 22 and 18. This promise pointed to Christ. So Abraham understood it as reference to Galatians 3, 8, and 16. Um, he trusted in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. It was this faith that was accounted unto him for righteousness. The covenant with Abraham also maintained the authority of God's law, <laughs> the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. That's another topic within itself, but that's Genesis 17 and 1. The testimony of God concerning his faithful servant was, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Genesis 26, verse 5. And the Lord declared to him, I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, again, seed, not seeds, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee. Genesis 17 and 7. So we get a little bit of a, a background, a little bit of a, a picture on about the seed 
of, uh, uh, of the promise that God made with Abraham, which is Christ. So with that being said, I want to read two Bible verses, Galatians 3.15, I mean, Genesis 3.15 and Galatians, Galatians 3.16. So I'll start off with Genesis and I reads, I will make you and the woman enemies to each other, your descendants and her descendants. And another word for descendants can be your seed and her seed, seed. Will, be, will be enemies. One of her descendants, he will crush your head and you will bite or strike or crush his heel, okay? So, so uh, now Galatians 3, 16. God promises Abraham, God promises both to Abraham and his descendant seed. God did not say, and to your descendant seeds, that would mean many people, but God said, and to your descendants is seed, that means only one person. That person is Christ. All right. So I guess we get a little bit of understanding of where or, or what seed uh, God is talking about when he made the promise with Abraham. So my question to everyone is, what does this promise mean for humanity? I just thought. Because everybody keep quiet. Yes, uh, you done very good, Sean. Thank you very Thank you. much for those verses you have been chosen, and uh, it means a lot. As you asked, as your question said, what does this promise means for humanity? It means a lot for us. Oh. That is the first promise of a redeemer, the coming Messiah, who would crush Satan power over mankind and restore us to God, initial destiny for us. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, uh, you just read, but I check it, uh, I didn't have time to check it all, but when he said, and I will put, I just checked this one, he said, let alone like God let alone. But when he sees something happen, he just let them alone. Enmity, when I check this word, enmity, he said, your attitude. That is another thing. Okay. Your attitude between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. <laughs> In Roman, in the, in the book of Roman, Paul said in the book of Roman, chapter 16, verse 20, and the God of peace, who, do, who, is, who is this God? The God of peace shall bruise Satan and uh, your feet, right? Shortly, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We can see God, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he's talking about the Father, the God of peace. And also when he said the grace of our Lord, the grace we know that is the kindness of, of, of Jesus Christ himself. Christ oh. be with you. Amen. The promise, this promise also fulfilled in Luke chapter 1 verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing. You see how we put that? Holy thing. Who is holy? God is holy. Yeah. Which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I just stop here, but what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying here, the same like is very something is very strange when the angel tell uh, Mary what will happen from the Holy Ghost and he will have the baby and before even before he met uh, he met um, uh, what is his name before he met her husband uh, Joseph 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 yes and uh, you imagine he probably will not be able to walk by himself with pregnancy and even tell many people what, what did happen to, to her, he might be killed. 
is very yep. dangerous. And even Jesus Christ is very difficult, as you just mentioned a few times, Sean, about the progressive revelation. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus Christ himself, when he said, uh, when he talking in, in, the, in the temple, when he explained to them, he, clearly he is a Messiah. They want to kill him. Yeah. Oh. You know, I let others explain a little bit as well. <laughs> yeah. It's very touching. It's, it's a lot for us. You, you're right, man. It, it, it is a topic that is very deep. And like you said, I mean, we could go on for days and days. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to hearing from, from others in, in regards to the question. Yeah, well, Sean, I'll get in there. Um, <laughs> you know, um, you look at um, when sin came into the human race. I love your question. Um, your question is humanity. What does it mean for humanity? Yeah. And, and the way it structured the verse when Jesus spoke to them, he spoke in human terms and he used humanity, you understand, yeah. to get us back. He used humanity. Ah, um, he just didn't use his almighty power, but he used humanity. I like the question, that you, the, the, the word that you used as humanity. But for us to really understand what the promise is, we actually need to understand a little bit about the fall. Mm. Now, um, what actually happened, you know? Um, um, why is this promise so important? We need to ask. Why is the woman's seed, the woman's seed, he says, the seed of the woman, but who brings the enmity? God brings it. It does not, the woman doesn't bring it. But the seed plays a very important role. Without humanity itself, um, God and humanity needs to play this role to bring humanity back into harmony with God. Mm. Um, the promise was there. Why the promise? Because Adam and Eve was dying. When they were hiding behind the bush. So they ate the, the tree. Um, Satan told them lies. They believed Satan. They ate the tree and they hid away. And I just want to explain it shortly. They were hiding behind a bush, right? But what was so funny, you know, Sean, when I read the story again this week, was that they weren't hiding by themselves. You know who was hiding with them? Satan. Because when Jesus was speaking, he was speaking to all three of them. Maybe Satan could be in another garden somewhere else, but it, it just sounded like they were good friends after they sinned. They were sitting behind the bush. Satan was no more in the tree. Because when God met them at the bush, he also spoke to Satan first. He didn't speak to them first. He spoke to the snake first. And he doesn't even mention Satan. He says the snake. And, um, and he speaks in the terms of the snake as well, in terms of uh, 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 he will uh, bruise his heel and he will crush your head, you know. And, and, and that is what I, what I really appreciate of this verse. I, I, I enjoy reading it again and trying to understand the story to know what this promise is. So God finds them behind the bush, trusting Satan, being in the company of Satan behind the bush. And he was on the other side of the bush. And that is why this word enmity plays such an important role. I want to read the verse again, like, you, like you've read it, Sean. But I want to read it again for us to just look at it. I will make you and the woman hate each other. I put other words. Enmity, hate each other so that we can understand it better. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head and you will bite her offspring, or offspring's heel. So, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to paint here is more about relationship. This... This fall of men was more the fall of a relationship breaking down. It wasn't a legal issue. God didn't go to the tree and say, oh, there's an apple miss, or there's a fruit missing from this tree. I need to get Adam and Eve. It wasn't about the tree. It was about their relationship being broken from God. They were now in enmity with God and friends with Satan. Mm. You see? Yeah. And love... And, 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 and this love relationship, we saw that their relationship with each other was broken down too. Adam started blaming Eve. Eve started blaming what God created, the snake that you created. But God came here with a reconciling message. 
with a uniting message. Yeah. Thanks. You know, he, he came here to unite him back into a relationship. This is the promise. He says, I will make our relationship right again. And I will put enmity between you and Satan because Satan wants to destroy you. Satan doesn't care about you. Yeah. And this is what, what, what he was saying. And, it, and you can see it in the prayer of Jesus in, in the Garden of Gethsemane in John 17 verse 21. He says, this is what he says. He wanted to bring us back to himself, back to one another. I pray that they may all be one. So he wanted them, uh, Adam and Eve, to be united again. He wanted the relationship with them. It's all about relationship. Father, may they be in us just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be one so that the world will believe that you sent me. This was just before Jesus died. And that was his prayer for us today. He came to rescue humanity, Sean. Mm. Restoring humanity and recreating humanity. You know, when God created the world, he created it beautiful and perfect. But he needed to recreate in us a new image. Because the image that he gave us in the beginning, the, the, the spirit that he gave us in the beginning was good, but we took that away. So to achieve this promise, God had to become God with us mm. in a form that, we, that he can manifest himself, that we can relate to him and understand him. And God came to manifest Jesus and he came to manifest. Now we know who that is, Jesus Christ. He came to manifest himself as God so that we can see that God really loves us. And you know, when I was writing these things and, and going through the thoughts of these things, I was asking myself, but what happened in the Old Testament? And I like what you read earlier, Sean. Mm. Really, God was with them. This promise was fulfilled in the Old Testament too. God has always shown him that he's never forsaken us. He's always a God with us, although he couldn't, he couldn't be face to face with us because we are the people who's hiding away from him. God wanted to manifest himself to us and wanted to show himself. And my last verse that I would like to say, and like you said, he has come to reveal. And like James says, God's truth is revealing. It's progressive. God yeah. is always trying to reveal himself to us. And in Romans 8 verse, 30, uh, verse, verse 8, verse 38 to 39, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, no, sorry, no death, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Satan power must be broken. Only love can restore love. So yeah. what I, that, that is my part. It's not in the Bible. Only love can restore love because I don't want to, people to think that I'm quoting things that's not in the Bible. Um, but what I'm just saying here, there is nothing that stops God from loving us, Sean. He loves us continually. Um, um, not even sin, not even sin can, can stop us from the love of God. The love of God will always be there. The only thing that sin will then do is separate us from God. That's the only problem and severs that relationship. But God has given us such a wonderful promise that he will never forsake us, never give us up and always be there for us. Even in the Old Testament, you could see that God was always a God with us. But he had to reveal himself clearly to us in the, in the form of a human being. Because that is how we needed to redeem humanity from its sinful nature. Mm. Can I share something, um, Sean, before somebody talk? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, this prophecy, uh, the first prophecy in the Bible, Genesis 3.15, that prophecy is for the future. Right. And that prophecy is not talking to like uh, the woman, like uh, some Christian believe the woman was Eve, but the woman was a church. And uh, mm. that is another explanation we can give later on. Not later on, but other times, because you're talking about two women in the Bible. Yes, one bad and then one good woman, because that is in the future. We're talking about when the seed coming, Jesus Christ coming. That is another thing. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for adding that um, 
a valid mm. point. Uh, I just wanted to add, sorry. No, no, um, go ahead, yes. Uh, go. Based on what James just said, <clears throat> what I found interesting on, on this verse is that, to me, it seems that God here on this verse is particularly um, talking to um, the serpent, to Satan, because he's, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. So we tend to concentrate a lot on, on the women offspring, right? But I found interesting, and I ju just noticed this actually today, <laughs> um, that there is a Satan kind of offspring be because it says here in the verse, and between your offspring and her offspring. So, okay. We know who her offspring would will, will be, but who is Satan's offspring? So is that um, maybe certainly they are not biological children of the devil? That's that's obviously, but it will be uh, maybe fallen angels, demons, uh, or humans who uh, will come to believe and practice his lies. Um, I think so, and. Interesting, in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus referring to the Jewish religious leaders at the time, uh, he used quite harsh words and, and he said, you belong to your father, the devil, and mm. you want to carry out your father's desires. So there is these two offsprings as well? It's not That's just, right. That's right. Uh, so I thought it was interesting that there is a devil's offspring as well. Yes, but they're not a literal, a, a, a literal yeah, yeah, spring, not, a literal not. father, but he, is a, he behave, they behave like, the, like Saturn. Yeah. Because That's the reason they become uh, the seed of Saturn. Yes, you're right. Yeah, in, um, I think it's in Revelation 14 and 8, it talks about the daughters of Babylon and things like that. So when we talk, like James mentioned, the woman is, is, is a church. And then we think about the offspring. So it talks about uh, a church is in the book of Revelation. Mm. And it, then it talks about their daughters and things like that. So maybe that comes into play as well, too. But I don't want to venture too far off. Yeah. But, but, that, but that's a good question and a great observation mm. by uh, Rod. And as he said, he just picked it up today. Uh, between thy seed and, and, and her seed. So there is two opposing forces here and they all have uh, not physical children, but uh, people that resemble them in character, can we say? Amen. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So is there anything else? Uh, uh, my brother Anthony, you've been sitting there really quiet and I don't want to move past you. So I want to see if there's anything you'd like to add. Um, I think I think we can uh, we can go on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll go on. So that that means that it comes to me uh, for uh, sharing of my answer for my own question. Sure. And, sure. Um, just just one thing there. Um. Sorry. I know you're gonna conclude now. Or, no. No. Go ahead. No. No. You you go right ahead. Yeah. Um. I like the discussion of the of 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 the seed. We we also know that there was seed in in like you said of Abram, which is the old old way of doing things, the human human way. Um, and that God will bring the true seed that will reclaim, which is, speaks about Jesus Christ. It's very symbolic, but it's also um, very um, truthful in, in what you are saying. And we know what seed means. Seed means life, means creating, means um, 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 almost something in action, almost something happening. You know, when you talk about a seed, it, it always think you think, oh, seed, I must plant it and it must grow. Uh, even the seed of a woman, uh, it's, 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 it's life, it's life-giving. Um, and that is what I like about this because God is in action. Um, uh, God is acting on something. God isn't sitting back and, 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 and want humanity to save themselves. God is in action. God is always moving forward in action. And this is God's way of, of, pray, of bringing action into it. And, 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 and God's real action was when Jesus Christ came, when, when, when he himself came to show us who, who and what he is. 
And, and we can see in the Old Testament the perception of some of the people who, who, who even believed in God, their perception of God, that God had to continually, progressively show them who he is and, and, and bless them in that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen for that. And, and Hyper, you mentioned as, as the topic is about the promised seed, and we're talking about seeds. In, uh, in John chapter 12 and verse 24, it talks about unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, verily I tell yeah. you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, a single seed. But if seed. it dies, it produces many seeds. So Jesus Christ is the promised seed, but there are many that will come after that. And we will be called, according to the Bible, Abraham's seed who come after that, after the promise. So yeah, great, great point to, to reference and to point out. And, there, is uh, one thing, there is one thing also we learn, if we know God's character, like some people might just put uh, the enmity, like God put hate, hate like separation between them. And the same like, we, we will never accept somebody put hate between others. We say that is a devil, it's not okay. come from God. But uh, when I check for myself the word enmity, there is hate there as well. You can use oh. the word hate if you want, yeah. but because I know God very well, and, I, and uh, I, I use the word there as well, your attitude, attitude. If you check it when you have time, just check it for yourself. That is better than put aid there as well. Right. Oh. But you can use it if you want, but uh, it's not make sense for me, <laughs> you know, because I know my, my Lord is a Amen. God of love. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess it's, I'll share a little bit about my, my own answer and uh, I mean, my, yeah, my own answer to my question and then we can conclude. looks like we might make it under an hour today, Hyper. <laughs> I <laughs> got a lot myself. That's incredible. Well, maybe did you want to add a little bit before we, before we go or are you happy to just go forward like we Don't are? We, oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Don't we have another round of questions or something? No, no I've, I've, only, I've only included one this time. Because I figured, I figured that we were going to talk a little bit more, so I only put one. Okay. Um, All right, so yeah, you don't want to save yours till later, you want to say it now, okay. Yeah, yeah, because if we are concluding, then, I'm, then there's no point waiting. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I was just still waiting to hear what everyone had to say. And I think the, the, I think the fact that Jesus came means that human beings, like Hyper said, are not abandoned like we're not, we're not alone um god god is there with us amen and there's um you know and you know when you when you think about suicide suicide comes when people think there is no no one who can help them in their situation that's uh that's basically what it is you know it's someone feeling like where i am it's just me and i can't even help myself in this situation um, is someone feeling like their situation can't be sorted out. But the fact that God was willing to come and look for the human beings and talk to them when they had entertained lies about him without any good evidence that he was that, that kind of person means that God is very kind, very patient too, and also very hardworking to restore a relationship that he's not responsible for breaking down for the breakdown, mm. not responsible for the for the breakdown of the relationship. And also, you know, if you if you go back to that story that I hyper cited about them hiding in the bush, God could see them behind the bush, you know, God could see them, but God knew they wanted him not to see them. So God said, Where are you? In, in other, so I look at it like God was respecting their choice. Yeah. He was saying, I don't want to like overwhelm you. Come. I know you're hiding because you don't want me to see you. I can see you, but I'm going to play the game that you are playing and say, are you ready to come out and talk? You know, oh. and for me, that shows how respectful God is of people's beliefs because they believed if they hide, God can't see them, <laughs> you know, and God worked with them to, so that they can be comfortable in the conversation rather than feel like I can't hide. I can't go anywhere. You know, they actually 
uh, were somehow feeling safe in their own imagination that God can't see them. And God kept them safe. And it's very, it means a lot to human beings. It means that God is not ambushing us. He's calling gently, would you like to come sit down and have a chat? Mm. You know, uh, about something very important in your life. Yet he's not forcing you to have that conversation. So I think it means a lot. It means we have, we're not abandoned and the person who's with us is really respectful and wants to help. Yeah, that's it. I just had uh, something for, uh, on, on the, on what Anthony just said. Like when God come to, to see Adam and Eve, they always welcome. But that day, God said, where is my welcome, you know? <laughs> They didn't welcome him that day. <laughs> Where is my welcome, you know? And they're hiding. And also, one thing you, we learn on this verse as well, or as sin, what's sin doing? Sin is not make God hide himself. We hide ourselves. Sin make us hide ourselves. That's the point I want to share. Right. Yeah. Valid. James, Valid. I, now, now I want to make this talk longer because I've got a lot of questions. So why, <laughs> you know, so why do people think, and like I explained, it's so much about the relationship. Why do people think salvation is through uh, a, a judicial system, a way of getting us right and, 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 and uh, almost like a judge has to make a decision and the judge has to have a payment from, 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 from somebody so that he is satisfied. So, Where do you think this comes from? So, so can, I, can I just suggest this? Just so that we stay on topic, <laughs> okay. I'll, 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 I'll conclude. And then what we can do is, um, if, since we finished a little bit early, we might be able to stay on a little bit after, then we can talk a little bit more in regards to um, your questions hyper, that have been stimulated by Anthony and uh, Rod and James. I, I, I know. I just want to hear probably just from one person why. Don't give me a Bible study. Just say why <laughs> it makes sense for some people. I don't want a Bible study. Just why it makes sense for somebody. Yeah, why but, why but does this be, make them feel comfortable to, from, to from everyone else? Yeah, just short. Just short. Okay. Just, just repeat your question again, please. Why? Why? Why does people believe um, that it's a judicial system that saves us? It's not the relationship issue. That God had to be satisfied. You were saying the hiding, that God is not hiding. God is the person who does it. But, but somebody has to, has to set God right and say, God, I paid. Somebody, you know, a judge sits and he says, who's going to pay for the debt what this person has done? Who's going to, who's going to pay for what's, what's been done wrong? Just short, just short. What do you yes, think? It's very, it, it's very clear, Ipa, when we just read uh, um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, we can see God is not hiding. It's them hiding. And yes. God calling them where you are. And then they, they said, we, we hide because, and they, did you eat this fruit? And then they said, well, yes, we <clears> did it. <throat> and then they start to blame each other. But that is not God. God, God will come in straight away to them. You know, mm. but there's nothing to hide God there. It's, it's, they hide themselves because of sin. So often when we, may, when we commit sin, you, you are scared. You want to run away from people. I feel that when I was little too. You know, I want mm. to run away because I did something wrong. Mm. You know, that's the way of, of men feeling. Instead oh. to go say, oh, yes, I did it. Forgive me. Mm. And nothing that this person will do. He will forgive you, you know. But unfortunately, I hope that is answer your question. But yeah. uh, Hyper, hang on. I, I thought you were asking why is it that some people believe that it's a kind yes. of a judicial system that system. saves us and not yep. the relationship that we have with yep. God, right? Okay. In that verse, in the verse from Genesis, who is the M enmity of god in that verse who is the enemy is is the satan. devil is yep. satan right yep and satan has perpetrated this lie among pretty much all the churches so that's why we got this judicial 
belief that is something that it has to be in the books and you have to have a lawyer and a judge and this and that, it's a lie. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's been perpetrated by the enemy of humanity and, and it, the churches, sorry. I think we, uh, most of the churches have just fallen for it. You will not yeah. die. You will not die. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I think it's, it's, it's the whole world. If you look at this world, like if you mess up something in this world, you have to pay, you have to go to prison or something like this. Someone's got to be beaten up if things have gone wrong. It's the way the whole world is. That is why. I think that is why most of us believe it because that's how life seems to work in this life. Mm. That, you know, you can't just walk freely um, if you do something wrong and people know about it. You have to be punished for it or you have to go to court and there has to be some, you have to have a letter that says you have been forgiven. But the truth is no one has a relationship, no one has a loving relationship with the government, right? <laughs> we, have, we have a relationship with the government. It may not, we may say we love my country and all this, but the government is not going to send you a birthday card. The government is not going to come and watch soccer with you and sing songs with you or do silly things with you. The government is too busy doing big things. And so we kind of, we are not, we are not personal. And I think in that story, that's what the devil was alleging, that God doesn't really love you. He's trying to keep you down. Yeah. And, and when you've got that mentality, if you still believe that, Somehow, you, if someone is not your equal, you have to bribe them, you have to show them that, you know, somehow they can listen to you, you have to earn their, their attention, right? So I think that's, that's how we all believe it, because the whole world lives like this. Yeah. That, is, that is difference between the government we have on this planet Earth yep. and God government. Yeah. God government, you remember the, the king Manasa. Yeah. Manasa, he killed, he, he, he cut uh, Isaiah off, and he did a lot of bad things. When he going to his slavery in, uh, in Babylon, and then he, he plead to God to, to save him, to take him out of here, and go take him and put him on his throne again. Mm -hmm. This government will not do that. Put you in prison or kill you. They cancel, they cancel your position, take the books you wrote a long time ago, you can't write. Exactly. <laughs> Everything is finished. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I also just want to add, before I, I answer my own question, I also want to add, too, you have to remember, coming through time um, after the fall, many, many uh, uh, Hebrews worship false gods and idols. And oh. I, I, we referenced this before in one of these talks we had earlier. Um, and it was that those idols or false gods always had to be appeased. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, the yeah. Egyptians had the river god, the crocodile, the, the crops and whoever. Um, and then they had some, some other um, uh, people followed the Dagon and the fish god and I mean, you have all these different idols and things like that, and they all have to be appeased if you don't. And then, and then we come to where even Solomon is, is offering his own kids to Moloch. And we, we talked about that, throwing them in the, the, the fiery uh, hands of, of Moloch. Um, so they have to be appeased. And if they're not appeased, then their wrath and their anger will come on you. And, 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 and today we see that a little bit as we talked about the governments and things like that. But even at a smaller level, if you are speeding, then you, the police will get you and you have to pay a fine. So there's always, there's always a, a, what they call it, a, um, um, what they call it, um, the, the law um, happens, punishes you right away for the things that you do. And then, and then mankind seems to think that that's how God is when he says he wants to punish you. But there's a difference, as James said, and I think we all were in agreement between God's government and how he forgives and how our worldly government forgives. Uh, Anthony, you nailed it. Uh, my birthday is coming up in a couple of months and I don't expect to see a card from the government. <laughs> I, I, I like what Anthony was saying, Sean, just short. Like I said in my talk, love can only bring love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and unless we, we, we understand that the gospel or the seed that was given to us comes because to restore us, to bring us back. Governments lock us in jail 
hoping the punishment will restore us. But it's only love. If somebody in there don't care and help that person and guide that person on the right road, he will never be, 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 be do the right thing when he comes out. So mm-hmm. God's gospel is always restorative. It's mm-hmm. always God wants to restore us. And yes, sometimes he has to treat us like small children. Yes. Um, and, and allow things to happen to us, you know, um, and, 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 and consequences to take its place so that we can learn. So we not just really learn, just turn towards him and ask him for help. Yes. Yeah. And that was what Manasseh did. And the other example is also King Nebuchadnezzar, who was out in the field for seven years, seven years eating grass, but he restored him back to his throne as well, too. So our God is a marvelous, amazing, <laughs> loving father. Wow. Amen. Uh, amen. Um, so for me, what I'd like to conclude on and wrapping it all up is, um, I mean, we'll give my answer first and then we'll do closing comments to my own question. So my question was, what does this promise mean for humanity? And Hyper, you, you drilled in straight away on the key word there, which is humanity. And what is it for us? And you mentioned the verses, uh, God with us, Emmanuel, which is so important, which means that God, Jesus Christ, came down, the Messiah came Amen. down and garbed his divinity and humanity to show us who the father was, the character of the father, the father's true seed oh. has come down. So I think that that's important for us to remember as we uh, contemplate this question and as we um, give our comments and views on it. Um, and I really like that. And, and also I wanna say that, um, here, let me put my glasses on so I can read my little writing or my little print, I should say, is that um, to, be, to be plain and, and just, I guess, straight to the point and specific is that there were many prophecies given regarding the appearance of the promised one in the mm-hmm. Old Testament. Um, to Adam was given the assurance of the coming redeemer. We've all referenced that, Genesis 3.15. Um, and um, so, so that Genesis 3.15 for our first parents was a promise of the redemption to be wrought out through Jesus Christ. That was it through Jesus Christ. And we know that Abraham made a mistake when he was first told that he was going to have a son or uh, have a child. He thought that he could bring it about himself. And that was a mistake. And we do not bring about salvation or anything through ourselves. Because if we could redeem or save ourselves, we would not have need Jesus Christ to come here and to to be sacrificed on on a tree or as we say, the cross. Um, So I want to remember that. And then also we can remember uh, to Abraham was the promise given that uh, of his line, a savior would, would come. And we find that in Genesis twenty two eighteen, 18, uh, also Galatians three sixteen. all the v- verses I was referencing earlier, even Moses, Moses, it says uh, near to the close of his work as a leader and teacher of Israel, plainly he prophesied of the Messiah to come. You can read that in Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 and 18. And then, um, uh, and then um, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah even prophesied of, uh, of, a, um, of, 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 of the Redeemer to come. And he says, he says uh, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So obviously that's not just talking about King David. Um, so they, Isaiah talked. And then you go, uh, Jeremiah. Oh, that was in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1 in Isaiah 55, 3 through 5. And then you got the prophet Isaiah who prophesies about, he says, also bore witness to the coming of the Redeemer as a prince of the house of David. Uh, You can um, look at Jeremiah in Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6, and then Jeremiah 33, verses 17 and 18. Um, Look, to kind of conclude on my own little answer, to answer the part about how how does that apply or reference to humanity, or what does it mean for humanity, it just means the Bible plainly teaches that the promises made to Abraham are fulfilled through Christ. Christ was the promised seed. Um, there, there, was, there was not seeds. It was Christ was the promised seed. I did allude to earlier that Isaac was part of that, but it's the seed that will come through that lineage, through that line. And it was speaking of Christ. Um, also wants to say all that are... Uh, and then it says that all that are Christ are Abraham's seed. I, I just mentioned that not just a while ago. And heirs according to that promise. Heirs to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. The earth freed from the curse of sin. Galatians 3, 29, 1 Peter 1 and verse 4. 
And then it says, for the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. And the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance and peace. That's Daniel 7, 27 and Psalms 37, 11. So I think that we all get the promised seed was about Jesus Christ and he was the one to come. And we understand that, that we are all saved by our faith, by our trust, by our confidence, by our belief in Jesus Christ. We have said the word faith and confidence and things like that we, and trust we have different conversations about, but they're all one word, which is in the Greek, I believe, which is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. We've referenced that before as well, too. Uh, too. So um, that was that was how um, that was the promise, and through the faith of us trusting Jesus Christ, how we were how we were saved. So I guess to to wrap it up for me is basically what I've already said. Look, Jesus was the promised seed. Uh, salvation was coming through Jesus Christ. Even from the very beginning, Adam and Eve had to accept the promise seed to come, and that's how they were saved as well too. Obviously, uh, they, they, um, they showed their acceptance by accepting the sacrificial system that God had put in place that represented the lamb to come and how the lamb would take the sins of the world or even our personal sins and that we would be forgiven um, and, and we would be redeemed through our trust in, in, in Jesus Christ. So that, that, that's what I want to say. I don't want to carry on too much. I think the points have been made through the various comments and, and uh, through all of us sharing of, 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 of our, our thoughts on the Bible verses and the question that was provided. Um, so I guess uh, with that being said, let's, uh, Hyper, I think we made it under an hour too, bro. <laughs> I, I think we made it under an hour. Um, uh, with that being said, we'll ask uh, uh, James to close us in prayer. Yes, before I close it, I, get, I tell you, Sean, and, and all of us, you've you done very good. And thank you for all your answer. It's mm -hmm. incredible. you all done very good. And, um, I'm just, uh, I, count, I count it, it's about uh, 355 uh, prophecy about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Wow, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, but, uh, let's close. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the plan of salvation. And we thank you so much uh, also for your character, for your government. We never see anything like that, even the angel, have to, to watch eternity and eternity about your love, about your character, about the thing you have, you have done for us. For them, we are really nothing. But when they saw you come down to do what you did, it's incredible. And each time I read the Bible about you, Lord, and that touched my heart. And sometimes, you know, yourself, I've cried when I read your word. Amen. Because it's Amen. touched my heart so much. And I'm sure it touched all of us, uh, uh, our heart as well, for oh. what you have done for us. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, we have a father like you, a father yes, which really care. And uh, wherever we are and whatever we might be done in, in the past, and he still love us. I never mm. think like that in my life. And Amen. thank you so much, Lord, for your word. Without your word, I don't know where we will be today. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for everything you have done for us. And thank you so much as well for Ipa, for Sean, for Anthony, for, for Rod, and for myself, what you have been going through in our mind and to make us to say the word we have been saying. And really it's touched my heart so much, Lord. And thank you for everything you have done for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank thee. Amen. 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 Well done.